All right, folks, uh, this is your radio talk show host, Juan Hicks with Freedomizer Radio. And uh, as I was saying, I do these, uh, I do a little graphics in my spare time. So what, do, what I'm going to do today is show you how to make a uh, little UFO. You know, if you guys have listened to maybe George, George Norrie or Art Bell, you know, it seems like they always describe the typical UFO as a flying saucer. You know, a little disc-shaped object or something like that. So, anyway, I'm going to make a little UFO. And I believe I have one already here made that I can show you. I'm going to make something similar to that. But I'm going to show you how to do it in ZBrush. And uh, if I can find it. Okay, this is the one I made previously. And uh, this is my little typical UFO. You got the dome shape. It's got a little green dome on top of it. But anyway, we're going to make one from scratch. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to make our document. I'm going to show you how to uh, size your document. Let's say, for instance, that you want to print. You got some nice photo paper and you want to print out a 4x6 photo. And you want something that's got fairly good resolution. Uh, say, example, a 4x6 is we're going to turn off the proportional button down here. We're going to make our width 1800 which would be the equivalent of 6 inches at 300 dpi and for the width and for the height we're going to have 4 inches and 4 inches at 300 dpi is going to be 1200 so now we hit the uh, resize well, we got 1880 there I mean 1800 and we got 1200 for our height 1800 for our width and we're going to resize it let me give you that little warning and to see the whole palette the whole canvas. Oh, I did it wrong. Okay, let me do it one more time. Uh, yeah, with 1800, need our height that. Make sure we hit enter now. Now we should have our, our size. There we go. There's our 4 by 6 So to start with, we're going <coughs> to. We're going to go to, uh, we're going to start with a tool from scratch, which is called the uh, Sweet Profile Tool, and it looks like that, and it's got, it's pinched off at the end there, and when you want to make an adjustment on a tool before you turn it into your poly mesh, you can go down to Initialize, which is for the tool itself, and you can adjust this. Now, I'm going to leave it more or less like it is but you can see you can change the uh, the profile itself but I'm going to get it out like that a little bit maybe we ought to uh, let's do it like that we'll give us kind of a, like an onion shape and uh, we have the thickness here but since we're not going to be making a, a shape where you can see the interior we're just going to leave the thickness alone for the time being. So anyway, we've got our sweep profile tool initialized. We've made a few adjustments on it. And, uh, well, to start off, if we want to start sculpting it, we make it into a poly mesh. So now we've got our poly mesh. And as you know, if you've seen any of my other tutorials, I like things to point up and down on the y-axis. So we've got to fix that. So what we'll do, we'll get a rotate tool, and uh, we'll modify it a little bit. How do we want to modify? We want it up and down. And we want, okay, we want to turn it around this way and stretch it out. And Mike, we can go from here and probably get it to uh, rotate. Let's see. All right, there we go. Now we got it. Uh, we're gonna turn it. The, we're gonna turn it the other way. We're going to have a pointy end, the real, the real pointy end at the top. Oh. Uh, if you hold down the shift key while you're doing this, you can get it to, uh, I'm going to fight it here a little bit. Now, whoop. Well, ah, I know what I'm doing wrong here. Okay. I'm having to fight this thing a little bit. 
Well. Okay, well, it's upside down, so. I'll do it this way. Control Z. Yeah, maybe if we uh, move the tool out a little bit and then rotate it. It wants to rotate in both directions. Right, we're going to adjust this tool again. We get it like that. Now that's a little bit more cooperative. Now we got it like a one. And then we're gonna uh, turn it right back side up. So now we got our point in on the top. <laughs> I believe it's a little bit crooked, just a tiny bit. Let's see if we can get it. That's close enough. So anyway, we got our uh, sweet profile. We've converted it to a poly mesh. Poly mesh. And uh, now we want to kind of shape it up into our spaceship. So, to start off, I want to squash down the top a little bit. And we're going to go to the uh, size tool. We got it on the y axis. The only thing is, I don't want to squash the bottom, so we're going to mask that off. We don't want to squash that yet. Now, not too far. Now we want to uh, maybe superiorize that a little bit. We get it kind of round now on the top, like we have a dome. All right. Now we're going to go to uh, invert our mass. <coughs> And work on the bottom a little bit here. And I think we need to inflate the bottom a little bit in all directions. No, that's not going to work. Okay, we're going to flatten the bottom on the x axis. Alright, that's going to be something more like we want. I just need to inflate this thing. Control Z. And thanks for Control Z. Alright. So we're going to uh, set up a different mask here. <coughs> need to clear that one. We got kind of a shape to work with there. Now we're going to make a little smaller dome. And we're going to try the inflation again. No, that's not what I want. Not exactly what I want. I think we need to just, what we need to do is size. Yeah. <sighs> What do we need to do with this? Uh, you know, maybe if I add some geometry to it, that will help. I usually add the geometry at last. Uh, can we incise it? Maybe we can make it like that. Maybe we should size it down. Yeah, this is this uh, it's getting a little closer, a little bit closer. And then we're gonna put the mask on again, and then we're gonna go to invert the mask again, <laughs> and then we're gonna superiorize this a little bit. Maybe. All three axes. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, we now we we got it in flight. Oh, it's a little crooked though. It's, uh, it's not. It's, uh, it's not. Uh, yeah, there we go. Now we're getting our dome like we want it. All right. Well, the spaceship's coming together at this point. Now let's invert that mass and let's get a little bit bigger base on this thing. We want it in all directions. Ah, I know what we do. We're gonna we'll we'll, we'll uh, blur the mask, and that way it will just gradually inflate it. Do, 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 do. I want to size it. Yeah, there we go. That's what I want. Now, we're going to invert the mask once again to shape our dome up a little bit more. Now, now we're coming along really well here. Okay, so we got kind of a really good shape to work with. And now we're going to clear this mask. <clears throat> but I want to do some uh, poly grouping here. So I'm going to go back to masking for a little bit. I want to isolate the dome part. And we want to go down to our poly groups. And we are going to group the mast. And then we're going to clear our mask. Look at our poly part. Now we've got the dome as a polygroup. <coughs> so now we're getting ready. We're going to move to the material phases <coughs> of this venture here. And we want a uh, kind of a glass type of uh, plastic or glass, we want to call it. But we want the dome just to be like, like a gel shader. And we're going to get gel shader A. And we're going to make it a green gel shader. And then we're going to go to MRGB. We're going to add, fill that object. And now, we're going to reveal all our polygroups. And we're going to go back and we're going to hide that part. And we're going to make this bottom part a metallic type of uh, silver foil. And we're going to make it from a grayish color. And then we're going to fill that out. So now we've got a uh, spacecraft. It's got a metallic body and kind of a green dome. So we're ready to uh, get started rendering here. We're going to turn off our floor. We're going to put our perspective on. And uh, we're going to add some geometry to it. Get it shaped up here. Get it uh, nice and smooth. We're going to go down to five levels. So we got a really, really smooth. Uh, I see I got a little glitch on the polygroups, but I'm going to leave this as is. You can always do refinements once you uh, start building and making your different types of, uh, of uh, images. So we're going to pick this. Uh, we're going to pick a white bag. I can see it a little better. I usually make these and then later on I go into Photoshop and I mask it out. And I use it in a different project. Uh, we're going to throw a few more lights on this thing. Play with the lights a little bit before we go to our hardcore render. I'm going to put a uh, put an orange light on maybe. And uh, maybe Raise the ambient, eh, not too much. Raise the intensity, eh, not too much. So, and, uh, we'll add another light in there. What the heck? We'll add kind of a violet light. So we got, anyway, so we can render this now, and what we'll have here, as I remind you earlier, you got this thing, uh, it's sized for a 4x6 postcard at 300 dpi. Assuming you have a nice printer with some uh, some really good uh, photo matte or photo glossy, and you can uh, print this sucker out. So anyway, we're going to go to our render panel.
and a few of my favorite printer settings just for your basic image are a soft Z, soft RGB, and my depth skew. And put the depth skew in there. We can go to this little slider and we pick the depth one depth skew there. And you go back to the render. You can pick another depth skew point here. And so we're going to render at the best image. There it goes, and you got your UFO there. And of course, if you ever want to go back and work on it, you go to Documents and you can save. I'm going to save the tool, and we're going to call this Spaceship Triple X. So we're going to hit Save, and then you can go back and you can. Uh, Save the document as well. Uh, go right into Z Docs, and we can, which is a ZDR or ZDR. You can call it Spaceship Triple X Doc. Save it. And so that's it for this tutorial on how to make a UFO. And uh, I'll be doing a couple more here. But anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you later.